Welcome everybody to the Yolo County Fire Safe uh, Council meeting uh, today, Wednesday, September 28th. Uh, we meet usually from 4 to 5.30 p.m. We try to be thoughtful of your time if we can get you out early. My name is Rebecca Ramirez. I'm the fire chief at Yochdi Hewitt Nation. I'm also the chair of this committee. Right now, the vice chair position is vacant and we'll address that shortly. Right now, I'm looking for an action to approve the agenda for September 28th meeting, if you all might have had a chance to look at it. We move to approve. Um, Don has moved to approve. Second, Cowan. Thank you, Mayor. Mayor Cowan is uh, second. Uh, do I have a, all the in favor, please? Aye. 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 Any opposed? And any abstentions? Okay, motion carries and the agenda is approved. Uh, sorry, not the agenda first. Did I just do the minutes? I did the minutes. My apologies. The agenda for today also, uh, if we could get a motion on approving the agenda minutes. Chief Ramirez, I, th this is Kate Laddish. I have a question. I think we just approved the agenda, is that right? No, my mistake. I Well, we showed the agenda, but I asked for the minutes to be approved if people had a chance to read them. So my mistake, how about if we just start over again and we say, <laughs> let's, let's start with the agenda since it was a cross purpose. Agenda, the approval of so, the agenda. So I, would I move we approve the agenda. Thank you very much, Don. <laughs> Second count. Second count. All those in favor of approving the agenda. Aye. Uh, Aye. 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 Opposed. Intentions. Okay, the agenda carries and is approved. Next item, please, if we could approve the meeting minutes for August's meeting. And this is Laddish. I have a quick question on the minutes. I think it it uh, in relation to the. Uh, chair and vice chair, I think it refers to one year term limits. And would it just be a one year term would be a, a modification that I would. Yeah, I think we did talk about that last time. I'm not sure what the procedure for changing that is. It's uh, or if there needs to be a change. There was a question about that last time. Tanya, did you? I have the uh, bylaws up. Thanks, Heather. Um, so in article five and governance, um, each position will have one year term. Great. And the expect, and then it just goes on to talk about right, the vice chair moving into a chair position, but um, we don't have a stated limit to one year term. It's just that each term is one year. Great. So, so it's, if it's that way in the minutes, then we'll need to change that per what Kate is requesting is what I'm hearing. Right, so I, I would move to approve the minutes if we just take out the word limit. So it's the one, just one year, the terms are one year. Correct. We didn't talk about term limits. Thanks, Kate. With, with, with that modification, I'd move for approval of the, of the minutes. Thanks, Kate. Elaine seconds. All right. I have a first and a second. Can we get a, a vote on approving the minutes from August 22nd or August 2022? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? And any abstentions? Okay, the meeting minutes are approved for August. Okay, so now we need to uh, have nominations and I can see what you've put in. Can I make an objection to the agenda to explain? No. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, for the, we, we have nobody who has stuck their head up and wanted to do the vice or the chair yet, but we would like to entertain anybody who would like to nominate or uh, either themselves or somebody else for the chair position and the vice chair position going forward. And while you're thinking about that, um, I'll just say that the agenda and the minutes and the reports are all taken care of by RCD staff. So these chair positions are very important, but they don't take a lot of work, background work. Don't take a lot of work, I'm here to tell you. This is 
Laddish, I, I'd be honored to nominate Chief Rebecca Ramirez as chair. <laughs> thank you, Kate. <laughs> second. Uh, thank you, Chief Weisgerber, for the second. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? And I will abstain from the vote. And the vote carries. Thank you very much for the honor. Thank uh, you. You're very welcome. Call for nominations for vice chair. Anybody would like to put their head in this? So the vice chair, um, pretty simple. They take over when I can't be here and then they take over the following year. The intent is that it, the vice chair would then hopefully move into the chair position and it would just, and then we get a new vice chair. But it's not, it doesn't have to look that way. Any nominations? Yeah, this is uh, Jesse Capitania from Cape Valley. Um, in the grand Cape Valley tradition of nominating people who aren't in the room, I'm going to nominate Jonathan Flora um, from Sivera. We'd had a discussion, and he says that he is willing to accept the nomination. However, he's traveling for work right now and isn't available to be in our meeting. Okay, so we have a nomination on the floor. Do we have a second? This is Moira Fitzgerald, and I second the nomination. Thank you, Moira. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Congratulations, Jonathan. Motion carries. Thanks, Jesse. My pleasure. Thank you. Okay, we'll go to member announcements, please. Could I do a, a quick one for the Red Cross? Um, I've been uh, uh, at four fires to one degree or another this summer, the uh, McKinney, uh, Six Rivers Mill, and now uh, just got done with Mosquito. And um, uh, one of the things that was consistent with the folks in the shelters was almost none of them expected to be in a shelter. Um, so uh, let me just offer again, the Red Cross can do uh, preparedness programs for your uh, for your groups. If you're interested, we do it for free and it's an activity that'll help folks prepare for something that we hope will never happen, but uh, but happens uh, too often in the state of California. So if you wanted, you could just drop me an email. My email is don.palm at redcross.org. Um, so, and, uh, and we can arrange to have someone do something virtually for you and, uh, and we can fit it to your schedule, you know, short, long, whatever you need to, that would be helpful. So just wanted to say that. And Don, are you envisioning this to like fire safe councils and community groups and fire departments and. Yeah, we'll do it and we'll do it in schools as well That's the most frequent, but we, it's, the basic uh, presentation for um, for for folks from 15 to however um, uh, is a presentation that basically helps people think through their uh, what it is they take with them. I can I can give you an example from uh, Mosquito. There was a guy, a uh, really wonderful guy named Gary, in the parking lot at at uh, at the Sierra College Shelter. Um, he had a, a two door coupe. And, uh, and we were standing next to it talking and, uh, and he showed me what he had brought with him, which was the whole uh, kind of passenger side of his car was occupied by a uh, hand carved wooden uh, end table that had been the thing that grabbed his attention when he ran out of the house. So his car was occupied by this end table um, and, 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 and he kind of giggled a lot, but, uh, but basically, you know, uh, it's better to be prepared. So that's what to think about. Thank you, Don. Any other uh, member announcements? Anybody have anything to share? All right, reports. Okay, um, the next, the first report is the um, Kurt from OES, who's not able to be here. Um, this was sent out in your packet. Um, this are, these are the, programs that OES 
um, is funded through the Dodd funding. So the CHIPPER program is going. We'll hear more about that. Um, the uh, Grant Line Road, uh, there's landowner agreements to um, clear a line basically at the base of the hills from Winters up to Rumsey. Um, that is going to be a really big project. So we've already talked about permitting. Um, and then all the other small veg projects, um, the right of entry um, is required for the work to be done. So those are being circulated um, to the landowners. So Kurt's got about a dozen right now. I'm not sure how many he needs total, but two are from KPay and the rest are from Winters. So that's it from the OES report. Thank you very much. Any and, questions on that? Kurt's unable to be with us today. He's just, he's pretty busy. They're having some staffing issues there right now that uh, he's working double duty. So hopefully he'll be with us or a representative will be next month. Uh, RCD coordinator. Okay, so you also saw this um, report in the packet. Um, I wanted to highlight a few things, which is the Solano Fire Safe Council had a meeting, um, I think it was last week on Zoom and are having the next one October 17th, super interesting. Um, and then we just have our regular um, cast of characters of uh, schedules, including our um, brown bag meetings through the Northern California, the Northern California Regional Brown Bag meeting through the California Fire Safe Council. Um, those are always really interesting. They usually have a guest speaker that's very um, important to fire planning and prevention. And then I'll be talking more later about the Community Wildfire Protection Plan status update. Does anyone have any questions about that? So I'm gonna stop sharing so we can all see each other. Um, in, Continuing the RCD coordinator reports, Heather has an update on the prescribed burn association. Just a brief up, update. Um, the grant has started, our projects have started, um, and we're working right now with um, uh, NRCS Rangeland Specialist Nick Gallagher is reaching out to the ranching community um, and who is interested in uh, in the Hills uh, hosting a demo burn, a demonstration burn um, in the spring. And then we have our staff, um, six different staff members who are getting various kinds of wildland firefighter training and um, experience on some live fire events. And of course, we're coordinating with our fire departments and CAL FIRE. Um, the PBA, um, we also will be working with Phil Dye, who is a burn boss. He'll be planning the first demonstration burn next spring and mentoring uh, the association and folks who are uh, planning to join the, the PBA group. Um, we will probably have our kickoff more towards December um, and we're uh, after we reach out to folks we, we think might be interested and um, put together a date and a time uh, to you know, talk about the formation of essentially a, an association in which you know, there may be some nominal annual fee. Um, there will be a, a, a point, the point of the PBA is to have it, have it be grassroots. Um, so we wanna work with uh, folks who want to do burning on their own property um, and see what we can do as a shared group. So there'll be more, a lot more information on this for the Fire Safe Council as it's forming. Um, our, we're our, in the process of buying burn some, some tools that we will need uh, for this work that will be available for the PBA members, you know, going forward over the next few years. So um, stay tuned. Um, lots more on that. We're learning a lot. There's a lot of really great resources from PBAs across the state who have been sharing their experiences and 
their resources and their know-how. So I'm feeling really hopeful that there, we can get some good fire on the ground in Yolo County and, and our surrounding, you know, fire neighbors. Um, so, yep, that's, that's really it. It's getting going. You'll hear more soon. Thanks. So the next RCD report is Kate. Reza is going to talk about grant opportunities, which she's been closely tracking. Okay, um, hi everyone. And Tanya, could you please enable me to share my screen? Okay, let me find it here. Internet's out. Oh. I'm resetting. Are you I'm on my phone. My fire resiliency funding sources. Yes. Okay. All right. So um, today I'm going to uh, just briefly highlight some ongoing funding opportunities. There's the spreadsheet on Google Drive that you all should have access to the link for. Um, there are several tabs. The one I've been focusing on mostly in these meetings uh, has been the grant opportunities that have deadlines. But there are a couple coming up that are ongoing opportunities that kind of happen quarterly that might be good fits for some of the fire departments or um, others. And the first is FM Global. And it uh, focuses on fire prevention. Eligible applicants are fire departments and brigades and national, state, regional, local, and community organizations. The grant period review period closes on the quarter or after 100 applications are received. So the next application period is starting uh, in October. So get yours in early. It's a national um, national competition, they will probably get 100 applications well before December 31st. Um, and if you, if anyone's interested, I have a copy of the application. It's not very rigorous um, and should be easy to fill out and awards average 1,000 to 3,000. I looked through some of the previously awarded grants and they actually go up to 5,000 pretty regularly. So if there's equipment that you need or fire prevention education and training, they paid for some people to attend classes and trainings, um, that might be a good one to, to look at. And then there's also Headwaters Economics that will um, provide technical assistance to local governments. And then there's another one coming through. I think I've highlighted this one before, but the Firehouse Subs Public Safety Foundation is giving grants again. Um, that the next cycle opens on October 6th. And this is another one that closes this, this one after 600 applications are received. So it's a good idea to get, get an application in in the first couple of weeks that it's open. And that's a little bigger of a grant, 10, 15 to 25K. And um, if you make the request for more than 50,000, it will be denied. So, and I also have a copy of that application. If anyone's interested, I can send it your way. Um, and that's about it for now. There's um, not a lot of grant opportunities with deadlines uh, coming up right now, but we anticipate CAL FIRE opening some grant opportunities soon in the next couple months or so. Does anyone have any questions? Um, yes, Mayor Cowan here. Yeah. Um, I have a question on, on these grant projects, um, when those go out for the work to get done, are they currently subject to prevailing wage rules? I think That's that, real, re, oh, go ahead, Heather, if you know the answer on that. Thank you. Well, I am um, just being um, local district, um, which we're a public agency, all the work that we do that touches the ground like that, we are subject to prevailing wage if we're not doing the work ourselves. Um, so it depends on who the uh, worded en entity is. Uh, if it's a nonprofit, that's different. 
Okay, the reason I ask is Assemblymember member Curry has a bill on the governor's desk right now that's already passed the legislature. I believe it's AB 1771 or 1717 that um, would make any and all wildfire mitigation work subject to prevailing wage rules and regulations. And that's very concerning to me because what it would instantly do is it would decrease the amount of work that can get done by 30 to 50% because prevailing wage work typically costs 30 to 50% more than when it's just out on the regular market. I know that because I'm a contractor that works away from prevailing wage and I've also done prevailing wage work. So, I'm real concerned about that because I think for a lot of these small projects that might be privately funded, stuff like that, the way I read that um, legislation, any project that has anything to do with wildfire mitigation would now be considered government work and subject to prevailing wages. And I think that's a bad piece of legisl le legislation when we're trying to do as much wildfire mitigation as we can and we're we're trying to spread a certain amount of dollars as far as we can and to up the cost by 30 to 50% is not helping the cause. So just wanted to put that out there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, the uh, Firehouse Subs Public Safety Foundation grant is more about buying equipment, so that wouldn't really be applicable, but it's probably applicable to the FM Global grant. Hey, Kate, would that cover, uh, could that possibly cover radios? Um, portable radios and things like that. I believe so. Yes, they have a they have a list on the website. If you follow the website, or I can email the website to you um, and email the list to you if you like. But there's a list of stuff that they will buy and other stuff that they won't buy. They won't buy anything um, like uh, anything having to do with assault or um, like tasers or or anything like that. But they will. Communication equipment is covered, I believe. Okay, and is there a matching funds or anything? On that one, I do not think there's matching funds. I will get back to you on that as well. I'm going to put in a column on matching funds. Okay. Thank you. Any questions for Kate? I've got a question real quick. Uh, Jesse from Cape Valley Fire. Um, do you have any experience with Jesse, you went back on mute. Sorry about that. Can you hear me? Yes. Um, I've been looking at the USDA, I think it's like the Rural Communities Grant. Do you have any experience with that at all? It seems like it could be useful in um, getting funding for like community infrastructure, public buildings, like our Grange Hall or the Rumsey Town Hall that um, we've considered as useful for evacuations. Um, it's meant to help rural communities out with investment in existing infrastructure, but I'm not familiar with it. Off the top of my head, I know I've seen that grant and, and um, I'm not sure whether I flagged it for this program or not. So I focus on fire things um, that does sound applicable and I'll look into it and provide the information to Tanya and she can forward it out to the group or specifically to you, Jesse. Would that be OK? Yeah, that would be great. Thank you. OK. You're welcome. Anyone else? Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Kate. The next RCD coordinator report is from Allie Perman, our outreach coordinator and project manager. Hi, everyone. Um, okay, so hopefully you can hear me. Um, okay, so uh, the first thing that we have uh, to talk about is we are on the, for the website, I am compiling an online resource directory for residents um, so that there is a list of easily accessible local licensed contractors and consultants who can provide 
um, wild fall related services having to do with wildlife protection and preparedness. Um, and so I'm going to drop a link in the chat for that. Um, let me do that quick. So that's just a Google survey. Uh, talks a little bit more about what we're looking for, but there's a Google survey connected to that that uh, contractors can fill out to be included on that list on our website. Um, and then an update on the website. So in the last meeting, I talked about a software issue that was holding us up when it came to adding new content to the site. And our website developer has sorted that out um, and we are good to go. Um, and so we've been adding more and more content to it and we're about ready um, to add the finishing touches and launch the site. So that'll be coming very soon. I don't have an, um, an exact date of when we'll have that up and running, but um, very soon. And um, I'm working to set up another website steering committee meeting. Um, and I was hoping to have one earlier this week, but I couldn't, the schedules didn't align. So if you're a part of the website steering committee, be on the lookout for another poll um, so we can set up another meeting very soon. Um, and then the last thing is a programs update. So we have our reflective address sign and our neighborhood pilot, uh, chipper pilot program. And for the address sign, currently we have 79 properties um, with 125 signs out there. So sometimes properties have more than one sign. And so that's why the sign number is higher than properties, but we have 79 properties out there. Um, and then we've done uh, a couple of different chipper days. Our, our last one was on September 19th, and we have a total of 16 properties that have had chipping done on their property. Um, and then um, one last thing is about uh, flyers. So I was up in the Cape Valley a couple of weeks ago to hand out address signs, and um, that was uh, that we had a ton of flyers that are still up there um, but if you're in the winters area I'm not sure if we have fly program flyers that are up so um, if you live in the winters area and we can send you a flyer to post uh, please send me an email and I can send you a flyer so that we get them up at the local grocery store at the coffee shop um, and any other good areas to post um, bulletin boards to post so um, yeah that's that's all I have. Any questions? All right, way to go, Allie. The address sign program um, takes a massive amount of coordination and detail. So um, Allie's been doing a great job, and I know the fire chiefs really like having address signs they can see. Um, our next RCD coordinator report is from Solano County. So um, Karen or Chris. I can take the updates from Solano. Hello, everyone. Karen Young with Solano RCD. Um, we had our uh, I guess the second general meeting for the Solano County Fire Safe Council, as Tanya mentioned, um, or it was on the, the minutes, um, uh, for on September 19th. And I know many of you were there. Thank you for your attendance and support. The next general meeting for the Solano Fire Safe Council will be held on Monday, October 17th. We're at least planning on Zoom, and we're working on lining up a physical location if you'd like to join us in person. Um, a few other things that have come across our radar that uh, might be of interest to Yolo County Fire Safety Council members: um, we're working with some of the some of the Yolo County RCD staff to develop some um, outreach tabling activities that could be used for Fire Safety Council events. Um, we did a joint table this past weekend at the Winners Tony Dis Festival, and we'll be um, tabling in downtown Winners again on November 5th for the Salmon Festival. So we're hoping to have some uh, activities that can engage kids especially and be educational. Uh, we're looking at something with a home hardening focus. So if anybody has uh, any inclination to help out with that, 
let me know. It'll be a bit of woodworking and painting, and it should be a lot of fun. Um, and whoever shows up at a shared table coming up, um, be prepared to chuck some bean bags or balls at an activity and help us test this thing out. There's one other thing coming up that um, we wanted to make sure it got mentioned uh, with the grants update um, that Kate provided. There's a CAL FIRE wildfire prevention grants um, feedback meeting scheduled for tomorrow. Um, so if anybody has been involved with CAL FIRE grants, um, they are soliciting comments on how the grant program can be um, adjusted in the future. There's a virtual option to attend, or you can attend in person in Sacramento, and I can uh, share that information in the um, chat box. Other than that, we're continuing to make progress on Solano Fire Safe Council outreach and website. We hope to have uh, more of a social media presence coming soon and the website going live also soon. Um, working on getting that up in the next month. And that's it from us. Um, Elizabeth and Chris, you're both on here. Feel free to chime in if I have missed something. Um, only other thing, if you guys are in Solano County in the burn star at all from the, that we have a survey going out, we're just trying to get people's contact info. Eventually we're gonna be out on the ground in the next year. This year, um, we're gonna start surveying for predominantly long riparian areas, but maybe some other regions looking for things such as like trees that need to be come down because of their, their risk, things like erosion problems, concerns in riparian zones, um, potentially marking some areas that have a lot of fuels that need um, removing. So um, if you don't know that link, I can, I'm gonna go ahead and drop it in the chat or Karen will drop it in the chat. And um, you can also find it on our website. And it's possibly not of so much relevance for everyone in this group, but I know there are some Solano residents here. And also if you've got um, contacts in Solano County that you think should be participating in this effort, please share. Um, so we'll get into the chat box. Do you guys, do you think you did uh, an awesome job, by the way? <clears throat> you guys nailed it. Um, do you mention the plant sale? No, that no. was, no. I've been sitting here with my notes, wondering what was, I, what was that thing I was going to say? Thank you for the reminder, Chris. Solano RCD is hosting our fall plant sale. Um, it is scheduled for Saturday, November 12th, Veterans Day weekend, at Roostaller Brewing in Dixon. So we will have a bunch of native plants for sale. Um, these will be drought tolerant, pollinator friendly, many of them fire adapted. Uh, so come out for beer, good time, plants. Um, we look forward to seeing you there. I'll share a flyer uh, within the next day or two with Tanya, and hopefully she can send that out to everyone. What's the date on that? Saturday, November 12th. If you haven't been to Rose Taller, it's, it's a lot of fun. Great. Uh, the time is 12 to 5. Um, so we'll be selling plants basically until it gets dark, or until the sun goes down. Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Getting lots I done. Quick, oh, I have a quick question, Tanya. Uh, would you share the uh, information for those of us who want to sign on to the Solano County Fire Safe Council, please? Would that be possible? Yeah, I'm going to ask. Karen We've got a, a link um, to sign up for emails, and I will put that into the chat box as well. Great. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. There are so many links going into the chat. I will save the chat and I can send the links out with the report in case you know, you're know you on your phone out in the woods someplace. Awesome, okay. Um, does anyone have any questions about any RCD activities? All right, Community Fire Safe Council in alphabetical order, Cape Bay Valley. Moira, are you there? Yes, Moira. I am. I am. Um, not a lot of updates. We um, are working on getting the rest of the ROEs in to OES. 
we have, I think, three more to get done that I know of. There could be a couple more than that. Um, we are going to be honoring National Fire Prevention Week with an event, community-wide event, at the Gwenda Fire Station on October 15th. And uh, it'll be 11 p.m. to 4 p.m. with uh, lots of activities for the kids, fire equipment they can get on and in and all over. And um, several other agencies will be joining our fire department at this event. We will have educational materials to hand out to mom and dad, uh, both in English and in Spanish. Um, we'll be, Sivera will be doing a lot of outreach while we're there. And we have a member of, uh, for the first time, we have a member of our Hispanic community who is going to be assisting us at that event and encouraging the Hispanic members of the community to actually attend. Um, and we're really excited about that because outreach has been a little bit challenging for us, regardless of the person's native language, <laughs> it's been a challenge, but especially with the Hispanic community. So we're pretty excited about that. Have him almost convinced, convinced to join the Fire Safe Council, this gentleman as well, which would be incredible. Other than that, I can't think of any other updates. Jesse, can you think of anything? No, I think that covers it. Okay, thank you. Wow, okay. Um, Pleasant Valley, is there someone here from Pleasant Valley who wants to give us an update? Reveille, can I put you on the spot? No. <laughs> well, we're working really hard on our bylaws and firming up some things that we've been like a jet airplane on the runway full of fuel, but we don't have the wheels. We don't have the down thrusters. Uh, so we need to back up a little bit and uh, firm up our organization, but we're doing great and working really hard. Thank you. Um, and um, Wes Winters Fire Safe Council. Are there any folks from there? Uh, I think I'm the only one here. So okay. for the report, this is the meal. Um, we're, we're actually doing a lot. It, the, the the challenge is just how to how to follow through on the projects that we have underway. That we have quite a number. For instance, you know, some of the funding that came through with Senator Dodds has been incredibly helpful to the signs, the address signs, and the fuel reduction projects now that are with the right of entry uh, forms that have that been out. Um, and getting these in the hands of all the homeowners and uh, making them aware is really our biggest challenge. So Ali, thank you for the suggestions of the uh, signs. And you could send some to me if you'd like. I'd love to be able to put them up in a few places in town. Um, we also had a, a, a grant, I think I mentioned it before, that we're following up on, on the putting signs out on each of our major roads with uh, QR codes that would be for uh, first responders that come in to help in a fire situation, to give the back the information about our communities, and address, you know, the maps and all that type of thing. And then also we, we are hopefully going to soon have a sign up on Highway 128, warning people that this is a high fire danger area. So those are the, those are the things. Our, our biggest challenge is just how to get, we have a core group that's in, involved and another you know number of people, probably half of a residents that are um, you know, aware and uh, following through on and interested in our projects and wanting to be involved. But there's probably another, at least 30 to 40 percent that we really don't know if they're engaged or even they even, they even know about it so that's our that's our uh, our i'd say our challenge at the moment yeah that big um, roadside sign that neil's mentioning will have all the local logos on it winters fire department and the west winters fire safe council and then our um fire safe council website um, so we're hoping as people drive back and forth, probably visitors may not go to links or um, or look at logos, but residents who go back and forth on those roads will. 
yeah, outreach is, it's a big thing. Hi, is it okay for me to jump in? Yes, please. I was just going to say, Ron has an announcement from the okay. 100 Club. Yeah, um, the for this fire prevention you know, week, uh, our the 100 Club of Swami All Counties, we have set aside $100 for the different fire safe councils to use uh, for this particular week. So if you'd like to send me an email um, uh, to me or to Tanya, I can, uh, uh, we can cut you, cut all the different fire safe councils a check and get those in the mail to you if you like the, uh, the $100 donation from the club. Thank you. That's lovely, thank you. We do also have our mini grants through our regional forest and fire, regional fire and forest capacity <laughs> RFFC program. Um, and that's, that's primarily for outreach, which I think um, $100 to go make a lot of copies. So thank you, Ron. You're welcome. And Ron, if you wouldn't mind um, dropping your email in the chat, so I don't have it uh, particularly handy. Okay, yes, I'll put it in there now. Thank you. So much going on. So I think that's it for reports. All right, shall we move on uh, to the Yolo County Community Wildfire Protection Plan? Hello. Yes. Okay. So a little background. So we have a community wildfire protection plan steering committee that um, has been meeting intermittently for the past year and a half. And in the spring, we went through and created a table of contents slash outline um, that was approved by the steering committee. So Kate and I have been refining that and sort of populating it for lack of a better word. But um, instead of going into all that, I just wanted to share with you the, um, that outline so you can see the basics of what we're doing. So there'll be an executive summary, a required signature page, a little preface, overview of the existing conditions, our collaboration plan and process. And then we have a series of action plans, community engagement, defensible space and home hardening, fuels treatment, evacuation and access planning, um, and then other mitigation and preparedness projects. Um, and each one of these has priorities, um, completed and ongoing maintenance projects, because of course vegetation is not usually a one and done. Um, and then new and future projects, and then um, resources. And the steering committee wanted this to be a readable, short community wildfire protection plan. Very often they'll be very big and fat, hundreds of pages and very dense with a lot of background information and they end up on a shelf because they're so hard to read. So ours is not gonna be like that. Um, and there will be lots of links to the hub site um, and links to maps. So it should be a very user-friendly document. So um, it's also going to have an appendices with maps, um, some tracking documents, demographics, district fire district information, et cetera. So um, it's 25 pages for now, but it's pretty sparse. Um, does anyone have any questions on the outline slash table of contents? Tanya, this is Kate Laddish of IHSS. And thanks to you and, uh, and the rest of the committee who's been working on this. And I have a question about the, let's see, I think if, if you scroll down just a little bit, I think it's the, evac yeah, the evacuation and access planning. Mm -hmm. And so it, I'm wondering if you can just speak about what what might go in there? I mean, is it is this about making sure that there's a route for evacuation or the mechanics of? Well, evacuation? The evacuation planning is something done by emergency officials, not a community wildfire protection plan. 
Um, it's more, you know, again, this is in the wildland urban interface, so there'll be a lot of um, projects focused on improving access or, you know, escape routes in the wildland urban interface. Um, I think I know where you're going with this, and I think um, it would be great so I guess this is a good time, unless anyone has any other questions to sort of segue into my next screen share, um, which is our project list. So Kate, did I answer your question? <laughs> or did I sort of, I mean, the, the nitty, nitty gritty details of evacuation planning are for the fire officials. And, you know, the Office of Emergency Services, um, and they have a lot of that. But we will have, you know, as you see down here, resources for residents, you know, places they can go for information, um, you know, sign up sheets for alerts or not sheets, but sign up links for alerts and that sort of thing. Does that answer your question? Uh, not, not quite. Well, I'll just I'll, I'll, I'll be more specific with my question is, is that on uh, the state has certainly had a focus on increasing uh, emergency preparedness and and planning for uh, persons with access and functional needs mm -hmm. of, of a variety. I mean, with uh, AB 580 last year triggering a revision of the state alert and warning guidelines, that sort of thing. And so, so, uh, so I I just uh, when I saw evacuation and access planning, it, my uh, uh, I'm I'm enthusiastic about uh, about us including that if that is at all appropriate. You know, if, if that's the type of thinking that we're thinking about. And, uh, and so whether it's including reference to the uh, community oriented information networks that are included in the new state guidelines that are nearing, nearing yeah, going public or, or, you know, or, or, or what, but that um, it, some, something like, like that, you know, I don't know if that would be, be something that would be appropriate for, uh, for this type of document, so. Right, and I can't answer that because I don't know, um, but it sounds like if you have, a list of resources, which it sounds like you do because you're so um, educated on this topic. If you could share that with me, sure. you know, at least putting in links with more information, um, I think that would be great. Great. Yeah, I'd be happy to. Okay, wonderful. Thank you. Any other questions about this outline? Okay, um, I. I'm going to stop sharing this. And um, there was a question in the chat. Oh, um, so Leanne is asking about if um, we can send a draft. Oh, we're not, the draft of the CWPP is not going to be shared yet until the steering committee's had a chance to go over with what we populated. So, if that answers your question. Okay, there's too many things coming at me at once. Um, so the other thing that I really want to share with you guys, so that's our outline, is um, our list of projects. So if you cast your mind back to about a year ago, you know, we, maybe that was more, we did our ranking sheet for our projects. And that was a little bit of the cart before the horse because of that wonderful funding from Senator Dodd. So we came up with a list of projects and criteria for ranking. And since then, we've been going out and had several community meetings, and I've been meeting with lots and lots of fire protection district commissions just to check in and see if they have any um, issues. And so we have a spreadsheet. So um, I'm going to share the spreadsheet with you. It's very big. I'm calling it a basic spreadsheet because I didn't want to uh, make it too complicated um but this is a culmination from this year and a little bit from last year of the projects that everyone has been um, throwing up on the wall at community meetings and giving input in throughout this past year so this is an expanded list you'll see um, it, it looks a lot like the google doc that you've seen in the past um, the highlighted one projects here are the ones that have abstracts already based on that last year funding. Um, the number is just what corresponds on the map. Some people drew um, projects on maps, um, so they need to be numbered. Lead or proponent, just the location 
a very brief description. And like I said, the highlighted ones have longer abstracts and that's available on the Google Doc. The status, and then we have, um, this should all look familiar. I have not populated this all the way, even just from the older ones, but um, we had our funding range, our project type, our project form submitted, disadvantaged community, et cetera. And the beauty of having Excel is you can sort it, right? Like if I wanna say, how many projects does Cape Bay Valley have? I just sort and there's all the Cape Bay Valley projects or West Winters or the status. Um, and the description has um, matches what's in the outline. If it's fuels management, evacuation and access, um, can sort by that too, actually. Um, so we have access, community education and engagement, um, defensible space and home hardening, and fuels treatment, et cetera, et cetera. So what we need now, so a lot of these are ideas that got written up on a big piece of paper at a public meeting, but they don't have a lot of information. Um, you know, we had one like a fuels break at Mr. R's property. Um, need a little more information. So now, if you recall, and Allie, would you mind dropping <laughs> the link to the hub site in the chat? Um, we had our hub site and we have our hub site. Um, I think I'm going to show you that really quickly because um, I'm constantly referring to it. Um, it's got some really useful, useful things on it. Um, so here's our hub site, the link is in the chat. Got our living with wildfire and talks about our CWPP process. And um, we have all our amazing maps. We're starting our CWPP project map. And I will tell you um, that digitizing all the handwritten stuff on the maps is a bit of a process, but that is starting. So that's, that'll end up here. But what I wanted to point, to point out to you folks is the CWPP project submittal form. Um, so you, you can fill that out, or if you don't want to mess with the online, just send me an email and I will, um, I can send you a word version. So there's all this just to give us a little bit more information about the project that was suggested. So, um, yeah, there's a name, just a little abstract, you can drop it on the map if you haven't written it in the map at a community meeting already. Um, not everyone has been able to attend community meetings, and we're actually thinking about doing a online community meeting, which I think would be challenging, but also um, worth it to get input from folks who haven't come to any of the in-person meetings. So that is my CWPP update. Our next steps will be, we will be continuing to work on the actual document and we'll be um, sharing that with the steering committee for review. And then we'll kick it back, back to the Fire Safe Council to see the document. So that was a ton of information. Any questions or uh, there's stuff in the chat but I can't read and talk at the same time. So. Um, yeah, any questions? So we're hoping to have a draft. I mean, we will have a draft um, by the beginning of the year that will go off for signatures. Um, it'll be reviewed by Cal Fire. And then it'll also be signed by the Fire Chiefs Association and some of the local governments and people who have been involved in the process. It's happening, people. But do if, if um, and I can send you the list as well, um, in case you didn't obviously see it as I scrolled through it. But you know, if you had a project that's on that list um, and you wanna give a little more information about it, that would be great. That is all I have at the moment. All right, thank you, Tanya, appreciate it. So I think we're on to new topics for next meeting. That went fast. So um, I was the guest speaker today. <laughs> um, last, last month, we had Christian Kane from Perennial Grazing at the suggestion of 
you all, is there any topics that you would like me to find a speaker on for coming meetings? I know the Pleasant Valley Fire Safe Council has had some really good ones, like they had um, the California Fish and, uh, Department of Fish and Wildlife talk about permitting, doing work in waterways, et cetera, et cetera. Anyone have anything that they really want to know about? Gonna make me think of it myself, huh? Okay. Well, Tanya, I already know. I know there's already work, uh, research, and whatnot that's been going on, and this topic is really specific to the Cape Bay Valley. I don't think it uh, has created a problem anywhere else yet. But my favorite plant, Arundo. So looking at traveling the creek bed because it is very dry and I can drive anywhere I want in it right now. Um, the Arundo is alive and well, but it's also when you look at any stand of it, at least 50% of it is dry, meaning huge fire risk. And this stuff is super tall. If, if you guys aren't familiar with Arundo, super tall, super dense. And when it catches fire, it's pretty scary looking and it's going to spread fire literally up and down the valley so anybody you can think of maybe that could speak to how arundo is eradicated or what the concerns are or anything about arundo huh i do know someone very familiar with that topic okay. who may be able to give you a presentation on that all right <laughs> for those of you who don't know that would be me <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't realize that was putting you on the spot. No, that's fine. That's yeah. fine. I've done it before. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, that's a good one. That's definitely Is a good one. Is the primarily in the Cape Bay Valley? No, there's some in Puda Creek and some of oh, the really? tributaries, and there's actually um, some on the valley floor here, but it's really most dramatic in Cache Creek in the Cape Bay Valley like the healthiest crop up here if we could figure out a way to monetize it you know it's yeah it's a beast but i could talk about that for a long time but not today okay that's a good one thank you moira cute kids are always welcome at meetings by the way <laughs> Anything else for the new topics for the next meeting? And anything else for the good of the order before we take off that anybody hasn't thought about? Bill, you, you, maybe you could give us an update on how that uh, project's gone in your neck of the woods. Yes. That'd be great. Um, Puda Creek? Yeah. Yeah, so uh, we were fortunate enough to get um, connected with the CCC um, back in August sometime. And uh, we passed a, a NAGDAC at the County Board of Supervisors and they've been uh, executing our uh, veg management plan in the North Fork of Puda Creek, which is um, it's about a um, little over a mile long. Uh, heavily um, you know, vegetated and forested with a um, invasive species. So we're cleaning out the invasive species, thinning out the uh, ground brush, limbing up the trees. Um, yeah, it's looking really good. It's uh, They started work about three weeks ago, I think. They put in two weeks. They have to stop for a couple of weeks uh, for, you know, for some uh, uh, wildlife considerations and uh, discovered a few, uh, there was a fox den there that we didn't know existed. Uh, we knew one, but they found another one. And there's a lot of uh, habitat in there. It has to be careful. So it was, this is our project that we put in for um, uh, through this group that uh, didn't get funded. And so we were fortunate enough to be able to get it done. Uh, this has been a years long project to, you know, get the address this and the maintenance is gonna be an issue of course, but uh, we're very pleased that um, that area has been cleaned up and uh, should be good for, you know, through the rest of uh, this year and then early spring, and we'll see where we are next uh, next summer. 
That's great, Bill. And that is one of the things in our um, project list here with a really good abstract. So that would be a maintenance ongoing in the CWPP. All right, well, we'll keep it in there. <laughs> yeah. Does anybody else have anything they'd like to break us on before we let you all go for the day? I have one thing um, just to put in everybody's minds. So we usually meet the fourth Wednesday of the month. Um, in November, as we know, the fourth Wednesday is the day before Thanksgiving, and I guarantee no one will be at that meeting. So I'd like to um, just propose that we have that meeting on the 16th, which is the third Wednesday, because we will have um, some the CWPP to share with you and get some feedback on. So I'll remind you a few times about that but I don't think anybody wants to meet on the 23rd of November. Good okay. Works fine. okay, yeah, if you could put it in your calendars now, that would be great. Do we need to make a motion on that since it's a different? Um, I don't I think, don't we don't have the fourth Wednesdays in our bylaws. Okay. So it just happened to be the day. All right. That's well, all I've got. Have any uh, uh, new topics or nothing for the good of the order? We'd like to thank you all for your time today, and we are adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.